we've uh, drawn into a corner here for a little conversation, Dr. Marshall Stearns, who is an associate uh, professor of English at Hunter College, but of, of greater interest to us. He's the director of the Institute of Jazz Studies, and is a gentleman who's been deeply involved and interested in jazz for a good many years in its origins and evolution. And more recently, I understand, uh, are kind of specializing in the study of the jazz dance. I think the music led right into this because, you know, the music always precedes the dance. Mm -hmm. And then there's a dance that evolves, that goes with the, with the music. Uh, actually, un although most people don't realize it, we have an, the jazz dance has an ancient and honorable tradition. It has a complete vocabulary of steps through which almost any human emotion can be communicated. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me the logical thing is someday there'll be a jazz ballet using this distinctively American type of dancing rather than any other. You made the point a little earlier, which I think is, uh, is interesting, Marshall, that so much of the modern contemporary dance that we see on the stage today and that we see on television that we may think of as being jazz dance is, in, in fact, more related to ballet and to modern dance and is not, in fact, uh, truly traditional yes, jazz that's, dancing. That's a, a major point. We seem to be losing the jazz dance. Mm -hmm. It's disappearing. And today, if a young dancer wants to become famous, he learns ballet. Mm -hmm. And this happens on television again and again. You get Hindu movements, mm -hmm. ballet movements, almost anything except the real authentic jazz dance. As a matter of fact, I brought two dancers with me this time. Mr. Let's see, they were not only great dancers, they were kings of the Savoy Ballroom. They not only did these dances, they invented some of these dances. Let me introduce them to right, you. Good, good. I want to introduce Mr. Al Minns and Mr. Hi, Leon Al. James. Hello there. These we, fellows are going to uh, maybe demonstrate uh, some of the... I think we could take a few of the highlights of the history of the dance. We start way back, say, around 1890, mm -hmm. through the cakewalk. And uh, this was a dance that uh, usually it was just, you know, whoever kicks the highest wins the cake. <laughs> but then they looked into it, and uh, it turned out that when the white folks went down to the mud shacks to see the slaves dance, the slaves were doing a sort of a burlesque imitation of the southern gentleman and his manners. So they had the top hat and the cane. So how, far back, uh, how far back does the cakewalk go? This must go way back before the Civil War, but it didn't become a hit. It was mm -hmm. Again and again, the dates changed. It was popularized around 1890, 1900. So it was beginning and growing just as uh, as jazz itself was, right? Exactly. At the turn of the they century. They run parallel all the way. Let's Can we get the fellows to do that for us? How about the cakewalk? <laughs> Charlton, we can illustrate a very important point about the jazz dance. They'll take one step and there'll be several varieties. Uh, there are at least five varieties of Charlton here. It's hard to realize how important and how popular it was at the time. Uh, I have a friend of mine who was out in St. Louis in 1924, and he remembers the policeman in the center of town directing traffic doing the Charlton at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> well, suppose we turn to the Charlton. How about the Charlton and start with, say, Leon does the original Charlton. The way it was danced in 1924. <laughs> Yeah. 
jump ahead to the Lindy Hop. Now, this is known as the Jitterbug today, but originally, when Lindbergh flew the Atlantic in 1927, it was danced in the Savoy Ballroom in Harlem. It was named after Lindbergh. Uh, it gradually caught on until now, uh, dance experts say this is our only national dance, the Lindy. And the rock and rollers do the same dance and call it the Chicken. Huh. So we have a tradition within mm -hmm. this jazz dance. Uh, supposing we uh, take it in depth and study the, the uh, component parts. It has four steps, and they add up to a routine. We start, gentlemen, how about giving us the two steps? <laughs> <laughs> uh, just walk through the two steps. What does that look like? I think this is a step I can do. <laughs> I think that's the box. I step. remember right. that step. <laughs> now the collegiate. It's a little more complicated. Now the breakaway. This has become more and more popular, the breakaway, until they finally mm -hmm. come apart. Mm -hmm. And then finally, the Lindy itself, the step. So we put them all together now. and blending of jazz steps with folk steps so that it comes out sort of transformed into the jazz idiom. It has a routine of 14 steps and we might add the slow motion at the end. Supposing we walk through these 14 steps of the Big Apple. First, the shout. <laughs> What's the shout? Now this is the sort of dance done in churches today. The stomp off. Susie Q, <laughs> the Dusty Dusty, <laughs> the Spank the Baby, <laughs> the Charleston we've had, the Boogie Woogie, the Fall Off the Log, <laughs> the Truck, and then the London Bridge, which I guess we all know. Well, let's do all those 14 together, plus the slow motion at the end. Okay? Yes, yeah. big apple.
last one is sort of a demonstration of, of how you can communicate any emotion with the jazz dance. And we're sort of contrasting things here. Uh, this is the jazz dance vocabulary put together to illustrate how a gentleman asked a lady to dance, first in 1935 when swing was the music, and then in 1945 when bebop was the music. It made a tremendous difference in protocol. Uh, how about it, Leon? Can you explain something of what happened to the psyche? <laughs> According to psychology, the id and the ego and what have you, these generations are sort of a challenge for the former generation. And even the idiom has changed. They used to say get hot, and that's just feeling good. Now it's get cool. Same feeling. But <laughs> semantically speaking, you change it around. And in the dance, as a matter of fact, it's less you and I are interested in your, in your 30s, you know. You got so exhausted from doing that, you couldn't get in trouble. Second off your energy is doing the jazz act. Thing. But nowadays, everybody's so reserved, full of tension. So that's what you have to express in some way. Being reserved brings no tension. Well said, friend. But <laughs> during the 30s, well, there was depression and everything else. And now it's being what they were. But people used to really have a ball, a natural ball. And this is the way a fellow in the 30s might ask his girl to dance. For the purpose of art, partner will be the girl. <laughs> Great sacrifice. She rejects it, nobody will know it, so you say face. So this is the way you approach a girl nowadays.